Hello and welcome back to Spec. Today I'm going to talk about Warhammer Apocalypse. Now I'm going to look at what is it, who's it for, do you need it, I mean really is it value for money? But before I start, this is my opinion and I'm looking at it from the point of perspective of 8th edition Warhammer player. Now Warhammer Apocalypse is a game system designed to streamline large scale combat. And when I say large scale, I'm talking about mainly about the amount of models used. It uses your Warhammer 40k models, giving you a chance to bring all of your models to warfare and battle. Honestly, I thought this would just be a copy and paste from the 7th edition, but after getting a chance to look at it, as I didn't have enough time to play it as I had a few other things to resolve, war cry. It's not just a version of the standard 40k edition, 8th edition, not just like a simple update to the rules from the current to something bigger as it was kind of the case with the previous version of Apocalypse from 7th. It's much, much more, and it surprised me. Now, what got me was the fact that it was a fully self-contained game, excluding the models, of course. It contained data cards, tokens, and loads of dice. It had an alternative system that has the same kind of target values that I'm used to, so it was familiar, but not quite the same. And now, there's a lot to unpack in that, so I think we'll start with the most obvious change. The dice. Apocalypse makes use of two types of dice, D6 and D12. Now, this is not the first time GW's used D12s. The box of the Horus Heresy, Burning Prospero, introduced a similar damage system based on variable dice sizes, D6, D8s, D10s, D12s. The bigger the weapon, the higher the dice value rolled, and the same was true for armor saves. Now, what I liked about them in this system is by having D12s in the game, you kind of almost like half the number of D6s rolled when chasing a higher value. Also, some damage versus armor saves become impossible to produce. So, a simple look at the comparative dice can make that clear, so you save a lot more time. Like trying to roll 8 on a D6. So, I, I kind of like that. Data cards and stratagem cards. Now, just like faction specific stratagems from 8th edition 40k and kill team, they allow you to redirect the flow of battle. And for me, I know this was a good move to put all these cards into the box. I mean, I would not have been happy to effectively have to repurchase all my stratagem cards again for each army. Stat box are included. And just like the cards you get in Age of Sigma, they have all the details on them that you need to play that unit. Now, I would have liked them to be more like the ones in the Conquest magazines, as they've got images to relate to them. So again, the same as the Sigma ones. These are extremely handy, removing the need for codex like books from the game. Again, that saves you a lot of time. But they also help you to have a better understanding of the opponent's army, because they're to hand. I have no doubt in the future there'll be more expansion cards, but for now, this is pretty cool. Tokens. For battles of this size, you're going to need reminders of actions, and that's really great for any army where you have lots of units. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've been one inch away from an objective because I forgot to move my unit during one of my turns. This fixes that nicely. Also, they track the damage. Since Kill Team, I've been kind of spoiled when it comes to these little reminders. The Apocalypse tokens have another trick up their sleeve. Before both players interact with a unit, you each select an action, such as move, shoot, assault, etc. Then you place those tokens face down next to your unit formation. Then you reveal them. Now this adds another level of strategy. Combined with an alternative unit activation system, it's very different to 40k 8th edition. But it's something I would like to see in the 9th edition of 40k when it comes around. Streamlining. To make things quicker, as is the trend with Games Workshop games recently, uh, no codex is needed, combat and wounding and damage is all based on the unit as a whole. Now this is key. Units that have multiple models are treated as a single collective. That does take away from that single hero marine standing on top of a pile of burning hormigons, corpses, making save after save after save after... <clears throat> Apocalypse makes it clear that those single heroes are left for the warlords and war masters only. Price point. At the price of less than two boxes of Hellblasters, 
Mmm, hell blasters. It's worth the purchase, especially if you're the kind of person that can only game once a month. You can play most of your models on a table at the same time and recoup some of that long-term value. All right, let's reflect. Overall, if you just started in Warhammer 40K or only play kill teams at the moment, the buy-in is way too high, as you have to have a lot of models and they have to be exactly the right type of models too. It's something that you can always build towards, but if I was at that point where I just started out, I would not buy it. Now, if you have a mid-range army and play at a club or have multiple people playing at one table, this will improve that time spent. It will boost your social interaction time and will give you a chance to see new armies in play. Now, I would only buy the game at this level if Gaming Nights was pre-arranged and 100% guaranteed that people were shot. And in this world, people being so busy, we know that can't always be a thing. If you have a large collection of 40k models, this is a good investment and can hit that nostalgia button, getting you to see all your old models back on the table and get that connective history between past and current models and that brings a series of joy. It also saves you a lot of time in the new system. No more going through specific rule books, four and then five codexes and then special supplements as with the previous edition. For me, I will be getting the Apocalypse game and only the box will sit on the shelf because they'll be taking place of my now used models, the ones which were collecting dust before I got it. Yeah, this one's for me. It gives me that Hell Blaster feeling. Mmm, Hell Blasters. <laughs> but look, tell me if you agree, if you're going to be picking it up and if you do pick it up, what army are you going to be using it for predominantly? And if you're not, tell me what restrictions uh, that you face that are preventing you from picking up. I would really like to know. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I'd love to hear lots of people's thoughts and ideas. This has been Spect. Take care as always. And PC out.